Jacob Kropog. Coming in from the left, the T6 Texan II, the high-performance turboprop aircraft flown in both the primary and intermediate stages of instruction. It's the student's first step in learning all the basic flying skills, aerobatics, visual and instrument navigation, as well as complex formation flight. Following it, another Air Force, this time the Air Force T T6 Texan II, flown by the 479th Flying Training Group based here in Pensacola. Flying it, Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Diallo Creel and Air Force Major Richard Wilson. Used by the Air Force to teach basic flying skills, instrument navigation, low altitude visual navigation, and formation flying. The next aircraft through, I can see it off to the left, is the T-39 Sabre Liner, built by Rockwell. It's flown by Navy Lieutenant Commander Andrew Greenwood and Navy Lieutenant Paul Latina. This aircraft has become the trustworthy and dependable workhorse for the intermediate and advanced stage jet syllabus. Training students in the concepts of low altitude jet navigation, air-to-air -air intercepts, and the employment of the APG-66 radar. That is the Sabre Liner. The Air Force's T-1A Jayhawk, flown by Kerry McKinney and Air Force Captain Rob Fisher. This twin-engine aircraft, the Jayhawk, is used to instruct combat systems officers in low-altitude visual navigation, medium-altitude airways navigation, and electronic work warfare operations. That's the Jayhawk. And the last aircraft coming in from Trey Wing 6 is the fighter trainer T-45 Goshawk. It's flown by Training Wing 6 Chief, Chief Staff Officer Commander Kevin Lane and Navy Lieutenant Commander Dan Milicevic. The Goshawk can be flown at speeds up to 500 miles per hour and is used to educate students in the fundamentals of air combat maneuvering during the advanced stage of flight training. Here comes the Goshawk. We at Trey Wing 6 and the 479th Flight Training Group are proud of our well-rounded curriculum of academics, simulator training, and flight training, as well as our reputation of producing the highest quality military flight officers in the world. However, without the dedication and professionalism, the civilian and military support personnel who work alongside us, none of this could happen. For their unwavering diligence and remarkable contributions to Naval and Air Force Aviation, these maintenance and administrative professionals are worthy of our deepest gratitude and highest respect. We thank you. The elite cadre of flight instructors have been represented. Today, they're from the BT-10 Wildcats, the BT-86 Saberhawks, the 455th Flying Training Squadron, and the 450, 451st Flying Training Squadron. Flying the T-39 Saberliner, the T-6 Texan II, the T-1 Jayhawk, and the T-45 Goshawk. We'll recover these aircraft. The T-6 Texan II aircraft. Built by Beechcraft. It's an aircraft that won a competition back in the 1990s. Part of what was known then as the Joint Primary Air Training System, or JPATS, competition. And Hawker Beechcraft won that. They're the manufacturer of the T-6 Texan II, training the next generation of student aviators. The T-6 is a fantastic platform that provides primary flight training for the Navy, the Air Force, Marines, and the Coast Guard, as well as the Air Forces of other, uh, six other Air Forces around the world. And you can come see that display and the all-new Navy T-6B on the static display line. Thank you, Hunker Beechcraft. The Rockwell. T-39 Saberliner. It's been flying with the United States Air Force 
Well, based on a requirement that was issued by the Air Force first back in 1956, it's got two Pratt and Whitney J60 turbojet engines, maximum speed on it, and cruise for miles per hour. competition with the Air Force, the Sabre Liner entered production as the T-39A. As the first batch was delivered, the United States Air Force realized that the aircraft would be ideal as a radar trainer for the Republic F-105D Thunder Chief. The sixth aircraft was converted to this standard by enlarging the nose to house the R-14 radar and the APN-131 Doppler radar, and it was designated the T-39B. Shortly thereafter, the Navy recognized the Sabre Liner's suitability in the radar training role, and they ordered the navalized version that you see 